الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحب و سلم اما بعد کنٹینیو آن ان آر سٹڈی آف سورت الفطار اینڈ وی ور ٹاکن اباؤٹ بینگ گریٹ فور بیکاز اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ مینشنس آفٹر اسپیکنگ اباؤٹ دی ریزرکشن دیٹ وی نیڈ ٹو بی گریٹ فور Ya ayyul insan, maghraka bi rabbikal kareem. We need to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights. O oh, you humankind, mankind. What uh what will why are you ungrateful to your Lord? Why are you ungrateful to your Lord al-Kareem? Allah is al-Kareem. He's the most generous. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ سَمْعِهِ الْبَصِيرِ And nothing is like him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is the all-hearing and all-seeing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generosity that we find in the dunya from even the most general, generous people, or for the mother, for her child, or uh, uh, the, the, the philanthropist who gives to the people, who gives from his wealth is nothing compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor can he be compared, nor can she be compared to Allah Azza wa Jal, Al-Kareem. And he's given you hearing, sight, the sense of taste and smell, the shape that you have, Walillah Alhamd. And so we have to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and grateful, how do we show gratefulness? By worshiping him and him alone. And Imam Sa'di was mentioning the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the right of Allah? What is the biggest right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an, Mu'adh said, Kuntu radif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala himar. I was on a donkey with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqal, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqq Allah ila atadri ma haqq Allah ila ibadi wa ma haqq ibadi ala Allah. O Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here we learn the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Mu'adh said, Allah wa rasoolu wa alam. Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, حَقُ اللَّهُ عَلِيبَادِي أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا وَحَقُ اللَّهُ عَلِيبَادِي وَحَقُ الْعِبَادِي عَلَى اللَّهُ أَنْ لَا يُعَذِّبَ مَنْ لَا يُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Mu'adh, the right of Allah upon his servants is that they worship him and him alone. And the right of the servant upon Allah is that Allah will not punish him if he does so. إِلَىٰ آخَرَ حَدِيثِ So that lets us know the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا And it's to worship him and not associate any partners with him. And that's how we show our gratefulness. يَا أَيُّوَ الْإِنسَانِ مَا غَرَكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ O you mankind, why, why are you gr- ungrateful? to your Lord, the most generous. Your Lord is the most generous, but you're ungrateful to him. SubhanAllah. And we're ungrateful by not worshiping him. We're ungrateful by having shortcomings in our Iman, by, uh, uh, if, even if it's not committing shirk, shortcomings in our Iman by doing sins. Because what is Iman? What is Iman? Iman, what we know, from the principles of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah that Iman, Iman, faith, is comprised of three components, if you will. Iman bi qalb, Iman bi jawarih, wa Iman bi lisan. That Iman is on our tongue and is on our limbs and it is in our hearts and when we make the testimony of faith that's 
articulating iman on your tongues, that you're bearing witness that there's no God worthy of worship, and the Prophet ﷺ is the last prophet and messenger. And that's a, one of the pillars of iman. And that is iman, you know, it's on the tongue. And iman in the heart, of course, that is the belief. And that is tawakkul, you know, relying on Allah and all those acts of ibadah and taqwa, which is in the heart. And then, Iman is also comprised of what? Al-amal bijawarih is uh, deeds on the limbs, on the hands. So for example, if you remove something harmful in the road, uh, you shake your brother's hand or you smile at someone, uh, whatever good deed that you do with your hands, when you pray, you make salat. Salat is a physical act. It, it, salat really combines all aspects of Iman because Salat, it's the physical actions of making sujood and ruku' and it's also uh, the dhikr and, and reciting Fatiha on the tongue and it's also uh, of course having khushur in the heart and tu'ma'nina, you know, having a relaxed, comforted heart. So all of those uh, aspects of Iman are in the Salat. And Iman increases with obedience to Allah and it decreases with disobedience to Allah. So when you decrease your Iman by being disobedient to Allah, you're being ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyul insan, ma gharaka bi rabbikal kareem. O you mankind, why are you being un ungrateful <coughs> to your Lord the most generous. Then Imam Asadi mentioned he said does it befit you, O humankind, to deny the bounty of the most gracious or be ungrateful to the kindness of the most kind? This behavior results from your ignorance, injustice, stubbornness, inequity. You should thank Allah that he did not make you in the shape of a dog unto the rest of the statements he said. Then the Imam said, Allah's statement, nay, but you deny a deen. No, rather, you deny the day of resurrection. So all of that, that shows that's a denial of Iman. You deny that you'll actually be resurrected before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People can say they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you see now the relationship, why it's so important, all those pillars of Iman. Because if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that necessitates that you will believe that He will resurrect you. Nay, but you deny a deen, which means even after receiving advice and reminders, you humankind still persist in denying the recompense. You will most surely be a recompense for what you do. Allah has appointed honorable angels above you who record your statements and actions who know what you do, whether the actions are of the heart or the limbs. What befits you is that your honor, value, and respect and Respect these angels by being righteous in their presence. The angels are there. So that's the unseen. That's that, that's Iman. That we believe in the unseen. And that's a, sif, uh, a sifa of Ahli Iman. That is a characteristic of Ahli Iman. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Al-Baqarah? Alif Lam Mim, Thalik Al-Kitab Allah Rayba Fi, Hudan Lil Muttaqeen, Alladina Yu'minun Bil Ghayb. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, the shahid that I want to mention that alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb those who believe in the unseen that's ahli iman that's the mu'min so they believe that those angels are there and recording their deeds if we truly believe that and we truly act upon that we would hardly ever, at least not fall into the major sins. We would pretty much avoid, if, we, if our Iman is really strong and believing that there's a Malaika recording us and that Allah sees us in everything, we, we would stay, we would uh, be avoiding at least the major sins, you know, and many of our sins. But however, we're weak. 
we're frail. So we commit sins and we know we're wrong. We know we're out of pocket and we still do things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna labrara la fi na'im, winna al fujar la fi jaheem, yaslona ha yom ad-deen, wama hum anha bi ghaibeen, wama adrakuma yom ad-deen, thuma ma adrakuma yom ad-deen, yom la tamliku nafsun li nafsin shay'a, wa amru yom a'idhin lillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily the abrar, the righteous, will be in delight. So the righteous, they'll, they're going to be happy on the Day of Judgment. And verily the fujjar, the wicked, will be in the blazing fire. Wa'iyadhim billah. They, this, after the Day of Judgment, after our recompense. Therein they will enter and taste its burning flame on the Day of Recompense. Wa'iyadhim billah. And they, al-fujjar, will not be absent therefrom. They'll be present. They'll be in that fire. And what will make you know what the day of recompense is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks this rhetorical question. And then he repeats it. Again, what will make you know what the day of recompense is? It will be the day when no person shall have power for another. And the decision that day will be holy with Allah. Imam Sa'di says, The abrar are those who fulfill Allah's rights and the rights of his slaves and persevere in righteousness regarding acts of the heart and acts of the limbs. They are those who will receive the delightful rewards in the heart, soul, and body in this life, in the residence of the grave, and in the residence of the eternity. So that's a good, that's an excellent sign uh, for Ali man. That's an excellent um, glad tidings as well. And you, you know that whenever you are feeling strong in your Iman, it, it, it is as if nothing can harm you. You feel good when you're doing that. This for me has been a very good Ramadan so far, just these few days. I feel good. That's why I'm trying to teach more, because this reminds me more. And so you feel good. You feel like you're, when you start making a little headway above some of your sins, you start removing yourself from some regular sins that you do, you feel better. You feel healthier. It's like a health. So that shows you the health in your mind, in your body, and your soul that you feel uh, in this life. And you'll feel it in the hereafter. Because that's, that's a part of Iman. You feel high off Iman, in, in a, so to speak. <clears throat> and then he says, And verily the Fujar, he, he comments, Who fall into shortcomings regarding Allah's rights and the rights of his slaves. And all of us do. The Prophet said, All the children of Adam make sins, and the best of those who make sin are those who repent. Whose hearts are wicked. So he's talking about fujar. Those are the wicked sinners. Those are the ones who are really, you know, the disbelievers and wicked hypocrites and, and you know, people who are wicked and will be tormented. Uh, his slaves who are hearts are wicked, leading their limbs to be wicked as well, will be in the blazing fire. So if the heart is sick, the limbs are sick. And this we find in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam in Sahih Muslim. With the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, In the fi jizid mudghatin, Ida salaha salaha jizid kullu, With a fasid, With a fasid a fasid a jizid kullu, Ala hiya qalb. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, In the body is a morsel of flesh, And if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. If it is sick, the whole body is sick. Verily it is the heart. So then the Imam said, they will taste a, uh, a painful torment in this life in the residence of the grave and in the residence of eternity, wherein they will taste its burning flame. They will receive in hell the most severe punishment on the day of recompense, the day of reckoning for their, for their actions, and they will not be absent therefrom. Rather, they will remain there and never depart from it. So this is the disbelievers, those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die upon kufr and shirk. And may Allah protect us and our families from that. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And what will make you know what the day of recompense is? Again, what will make you know what the day of recompense is? Imam Sa'di uh, 
he comments, the repetition here is intended to magnify the horror of that grueling day, which shocks the mind. The day when no person shall have power to do anything for another, not even for a relative or a loved one, because everyone is busy with their own self, seeking safety solely for oneself. And the decision that day will be holy with a law. And he will judge between the slaves by exerting revenge for those who suffered injustice from those who wronged them. And Allah has the best knowledge. SubhanAllah. What a beautiful, brief uh, summary. A uh, brief uh, tafsir Imam Sa'di has left behind. Rahmatullahi rahmatun wasiya. So in this last few verses, the Imam mentioned and he emphasized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, repeats about Yom Qiyamah to emphasize the tremendous event that it is and that it's so serious that we should keep it in our mind. That's why we need to read, reflect, and understand the Quran. So that way we reflect upon it by understanding it and practicing like if we really actualize and think about the Yom Qiyama, that's going to make us less inclined to do sins that's going to help us to stay away from the sinful places and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us tawfiq tawfiq and that is going to help us actualize and strengthen our iman and that's going to strengthen our iman in Allah and strengthen our man our iman in the angels and the books and the messengers alayhim afdal salatu wasalam and the day of judgment and in the qadr when, when something happens to us something difficulty some difficulty that we realize that this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we will reflect upon that and we will act upon that and we will be patient upon the harm and the, the difficulty that we face. But all of that comes with strong Iman and that strong Iman is actualized by believing in Allah and believing in, in the Day of Judgment. This Surah here is a reminder for us to appreciate Allah, to realize that the Day of Resurrection is real, to return to Allah, make tawbah, and avoid the sins. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.